my stats are kind of screwed up and I'm trying to fix them, but it ain't going well. So life is an RP life isn't a race, it's an RPG, and most of you maxed out the wrong stats. So, like, what do y'all think about this? Like, what is the what is the what are the mechanics? What are the rules of life in advancement? You guys get that? Like, this is an important question. And I think it's a really important question because they don't like teach us what the basic mechanics of how to live life are. So let me give you all an example. So there are a lot of people out there who feel like it's too late. So they feel like, you know, oh my God, like I missed, I missed like this milestone, right? Like, oh, I'm 24 and like, I haven't graduated from college. Therefore, like it's too late. People feel like they screwed up. So there's this concept of like, you know, missed milestones. And then people basically feel like once they miss the boat on something, like you can't kind of go and get it back. So this kind of concept entered our consciousness as humanity when people found these, uh, you know, like the wolf children. So there were some like human beings that were raised in the wild and didn't have a access or exposure to human language. And what psychologists discovered is that if a human like doesn't get any access or exposure to language by a particular rate age, they it becomes impossible for them to learn language that their brain sort of wires in a particular way, and then like a door is forever closed to them. And so the main question is like, is that generally speaking how life works? Like what are the, what is the RPG system that best mirrors like how you gain like stats and level up in life? Like what does it actually work like? So I'd say that in general, life is sort of like closest to, for lack of, I, there may be a better example of this, but like, one of these Elder Scrolls games where basically the more you do something, the more you level up in it. So the first thing is like this concept of missed milestones, I think is like not really accurate. So we see this a lot, for example, um, hopefully this paper will get published soon, but we, we wrote a paper about incels where one of the key things about incels, one of the sh a shared experience that they have is that there's a missed milestone of social development. So they feel like, oh, I've never had a girlfriend in high school, or I'm 23 and I've never had a girlfriend, or I'm 23 and never had a boyfriend, whatever. And so since they missed the boat on something, they're like forever screwed. Um, and so what, what the kind of concept of missed milestone is, is that after a certain point, there's been an unchangeable course correction, which has doomed you to failure. And therefore you're like, never going to succeed. And so we see this a lot within our community where people say like, oh, it's too late for me. Like I'm X number of years and I haven't done X, Y, or Z. So like I'm screwed, right? And so this is another example where people will say like, they'll go back to this kind of concept, which is that, you know, you've spent your time, like you've used your time or spent your time maxing out the wrong stats. So if you spent all of your time, like maxing out your League of Legends skill and your, you know, Valorant skill brought to you by Riot Games. Um, are you basically screwed? And so the short answer, like in my opinion, like the answer is clearly no. So like, let me give you guys a simple example. Okay. So like, let's say that, uh, let's say like I watch a bunch of anime and I sort of passively acquire some amount of Japanese, right? So if you like watch a bunch of anime, like you, you've like wasted, let's say four years watching anime and like you learn a little bit. There's some amount of like passive XP that you get from watching anime, but people who have gone like four years of like watching anime and like may be able to, you know, say things like, you know, I'll never forgive you or Sekai no Tame ni Yurusane zo or whatever, right? Like you're, it's not, you're not actually learning anything. So you can spend like four years and then what people will conclude is they'll say like, oh, I've spent four years like wasting my time watching <laughs> What, chat? Like, who do you, what do you take me for, huh? You know? Like, what? Did you guys think that I'm a poser? Did you not think that I'm one of you? You have to remember, chat, that I'm one of you. It runs deep. It runs deep with me, dude. It goes all the way down to the bottom. One of us. <clears throat> um, so where was I? Yeah. So like, here's the first thing is like, there's some amount of passive XP that you get from like doing what you're, you're doing, right? If we live our life and we're just sort of like passively leveling up random skills, like skills at video games or like whatever, right? Learning a little bit of Japanese. At the end of the day, you can actually like gain a lot of ground if you just put your mind to it. And we'll get to that in a second. So just, just to give you guys like a little bit of context, right? About like how I got to where I am. So 
So I played a bunch of video games in high school. Like I didn't know how to play any sports. Like I couldn't like, you know, I didn't play a musical instrument. I sort of like played a little bit of piano, but you know, stopped playing piano when I was 15 years old and between like 15 and like graduating high school, like I didn't really learn anything. Like I went to class, passively learned stuff, right? Because you're sitting there in class and you're like passively like learning mathematics. I did the minimum amount of work necessary to pass or sometimes didn't even pass in high school. And then college rolled around and then like I was 18, 19, 20. I was like, oh, I'm going to go to college. Like, you know, I'm going to party. I'm going to meet chicks, like all this stuff. And then like I, my 20th birthday rolled around. I'd never really been on a date, like never really had a girlfriend. And um, so like, you know, it was, it was maybe I'd been on something like a date, but um, and so I felt like I was like falling behind, right? I felt like I had to kind of miss the boat. And even like years later, when I was like 26 years old, so I graduated at the age of 22 or 23. And then like at 26, I remember going to a holiday party and meeting my friends who I used to be in high school with, who are now like doctors, they were like graduating medical school. And so I had like no job, like, like net worth of basically zero, like didn't, couldn't play an instrument. I basically had, I'd spent some time in India, which I didn't realize was worth a lot at that time. Um, but I basically like on paper, I was worth nothing. Right. So I had like a bachelor's degree in neurobiology with like, that was three or four years old with like no work experience, some work experience, but not really anything significant. So, you know, you kind of like get to that point in life and you're thinking like, wow, I've missed all the milestones and I'm basically screwed. And so I still remember applying to medical school and kind of thinking like, oh, in four years, if I graduate, like if I start med school, if I apply at 26, I could potentially get in because the application cycle is like one year and then you get in for the next year. So most people will apply their junior year of college so that they can start after their senior year. So there's like a two year lag time for med school. So it's like, if I apply now, I'll start med school when I'm 28 and I'll finish when I'm 32. And I remember having these thoughts that, oh my God, it's going to be too late and like, I've screwed up, right? That like, it's, I should have done this su such a long time ago. But the truth of the matter is, it, and then what happens is our mind, once we have that kind of thought, it like demotivates us and we don't feel like doing anything. We're like, oh my God, it's too late. Like I'm GG, SOL. I can't recover. But the truth is that in four years, like I'm going to be 32 either way. Like it doesn't really matter. Like I, the real choice is, do I want to be like 32 and have an MD or do I want to be a 30, 32 and not have an MD? Like that's the real choice. But that's not the way that our mind thinks about it, right? All it thinks about is all the time that's passed and all the milestones we've missed. It doesn't really think about, okay, what are the different options for when I'm 32 and which one do I want to pick? So that's really important. If y'all are like kind of feeling like you've missed out and it's too late for you, let's say you're like 25 and you've never been on a date. And then at the age of 30, you've got two options. So you're saying, okay, I'm 25, GG, like forever alone, right? Like finished. Um, but then like you could say like, okay, three years from now, like you may still be alone or you could not be alone. Like which one would you prefer? And that's what you should move towards. And this is where leveling up comes in because I don't think that unlike RPGs, I don't think life has like diminishing or it doesn't have like exponential more experience required to level up. So I think life is like you can just accrue skill points whenever you want to by spending time doing the activity. You can level up all of your crafting skills sequentially if you want to. It doesn't really matter. You can just level up whatever you put your mind to. And this kind of goes back to like learning past uh, Japanese. So you can like watch anime for four years and learn how to say, I'll never forgive you for the sake of the world. Or you can just sit down and literally learn Japanese in two months, right? So if you spent like a dedicated amount of time studying Japanese and learning Japanese, you can like become proficient in the language in 60 days. That's all it takes. And so this is the concept of deliberate practice, which I think Malcolm Gladwell kind of like popularized is this idea that like if you put your mind to something, you can accumulate any kind of like skill that you want to. So it doesn't sort of matter that you've spent all of your point. It, so this is the other thing is in life, like skill points are not limited. So in video games, like there's like, oh, we only have like 60 skill points. So how do we want to build them? And if I've spent too much time putting them into video games or like, you know, anime expertise, like I'm screwed because I've used up all my skill points. This is the, the big thing about life is that you can farm skill points every single day. Like you can just wake up today and farm a skill point if you want to. 
And so that's why we see, you know, two kinds of people. Like there are people that will excel at many, many, many things and people who oftentimes excel at nothing. And we'll talk about the middle ground in a second. And so the truth of the matter is that even if you've maxed all of the wrong stats, you can just start maxing up other ones, right? So this is kind of interesting. Like, I think, what was it? Uh, um, there was a, there's a great quote from like, Rome or Sparta or something that, you know, they, they teach their warriors to be scholars and their scholars should be warriors because if you're a warrior who hasn't studied things, you're going to be like stupid and you'll make mistakes. And if you're a scholar who's never fought, like your policies won't incorporate like understanding of like combat and stuff like that. So I forget exactly what the quote was, if somebody can remind me, but so I think like that's a really good example of we have this idea in our mind that human beings can't be both. But the truth of the matter is that you can exercise for two hours a day if you want to and like study for four hours a day if you want to, right? Like you can actually do all of it. You, you don't, there's not a limited number of um, like, there's not a limited number of stat points that y'all have. So even if you've screwed things up, you can still invest it like in cultivating farming more stat points today. It kind of doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. So so this is great. So thank you very much. So um, someone's saying this. Oh, crap. Yeah. The society that separates its scholars from its warriors will have its thinking done by cowards and its fighting done by fools. Faraz R2, come in and clutch. That's exactly the quote that I was thinking of. So there's sort of this idea that we have that there's a limited number of stat points that we have. And if you've wasted them, you can't get more, which is not true. You can learn, you know, you can study Japanese for three months and become proficient in it. And then you can go and study Mandarin. And then you can go and study Hindi. And then you can go and study Arabic. And within the span of one year, you can be proficient in four languages. So this is kind of what we've seen in our coaching program is that like, um, that it takes about, so if, if people are wondering, so if you're someone who is, misused your stat points up until this point. The question that a lot of people ask is, okay, how long does it take for me to like get, put my life together? And so this is where I would say there are a couple of different things. The first is that eight weeks is the amount of time it takes to start moving your life in the right direction. So a lot of people feel like they have inertia, lack of motivation, like they don't, they're not really doing anything. Eight weeks is the amount of time that it takes to start moving your life in the right direction. Coincidentally, it also appears that eight weeks is the amount of time that it takes to start to make neuroscience changes in your brain. Like if you consistently do something for a period of about eight weeks, you, your brain will start to change. What we see in our coaching program is that optimal outcomes tend to take about 12 weeks. So even in our content creator program with Twitch, we've lengthened the program for eight to 12 weeks based on a year of research. So what we sort of discovered is that people start to make change in eight weeks, and then they're really like, you know, they're really like at a good pace 12 weeks in. So it takes about three months to start to put your life together. What we see is in a period of about 40 weeks, if you're focused and put your mind to things, you can like make a drastic change to your life. So 40 weeks is, is like the kind of the minimum amount to turn your life around in my experience. And what I've seen with people time and time and time again is about 40 weeks to two years is what it takes to like turn your life around by 180 degrees. So I've had people who were mid twenties, unemployed, never had a job making six figures a year in two years. Like if they just put their mind to it. And so you may wonder like, okay, so what, what is it that changes over the course of like eight week, eight to 40 weeks? Like, what are we working on? So I'll give you guys just a couple of examples. So one is that people start working on something that I call the hidden curriculum. So these are the, the, the skill points that you invest in things that like become super OP. So a good example is like how to learn. So if you level up your learning ability, you get like an XP buff across all of your different things. Other examples of the hidden curriculum are like how to communicate, uh, how to find motivation. So these core aspects of, of self that if you use deliberate practice on these domains, if you discover like how to find motivation, how to communicate and how to learn, then all of the things after that will become much, much, much better. Over the course of 12 to 40 weeks, what are some neuroscience changes that we see? So a good example is like a change in self-talk. So if we look at why people stay stuck, 
you know, there's a little voice in your head that will encourage you to not do anything or it will discourage you from making a change because it says things like, oh, it's too late. Oh, like, you know, don't bother. Like, oh, like, look at all these other people. So there's a little voice in your head that actually is like sabotaging all of your efforts. So when you work with someone like a therapist or a coach for like 12 weeks, 16 weeks, 20 weeks, or on your own, if you work on your self-talk, it takes time to rewire those neurons in your brain to produce a different kind of self-talk. And what we see, what I see with my therapy patients, for example, is like 40 weeks into the into therapy, what starts to happen is they'll start to say something and then I will ask them a question. They'll say, I knew you were going to ask that. Or I'll say something to them and they'll be like, I know you, I knew you were going to say that. I knew that was coming. I was dreading you saying that even when I came into my appointment today, I was going to tell you this. I didn't know exactly what you would say. So that is a prime example of changing your self-talk because then their brain is able to produce what I offer them. And so the reason that I tend to work with people for like a year or two is like they become trained in like saying and thinking the way that I do. They basically learn that way of thinking and then they no longer need me. Then they're like kind of fixed, right? So that's like literally changing your self-talk. So that's just how long it takes. Like you have to have, you know, people will, will ask questions like how do I gain confidence in myself? If they grew up in an abusive household where they like were, you know, taught to be not confident. The way that you gain that is by actually exposing yourself to people who are confident in you. So we see this in group coaching a lot where people are like, you know, I'm here to like, they don't realize this when they come in, but we're teaching them how to change their self-talk. And so that's why group coaching will see a lot of like benefit that seems to happen suddenly without any like warning, like late in the game, 12 weeks, 16 weeks in people just start making changes in their life. And they're really like, no one understands how it happened. You don't see it coming. So seven weeks, eight weeks, people don't feel like they're making any progress. And then suddenly they kind of wake up one day and they're like starting to do really well. And how, why is that? It's because when you go into group coaching and there are like 10 people there or eight people or six people that are cha changing the way that they treat you and that are treating you in a different way, your mind sort of gets a different experience. So this is just kind of to summarize, like, you know, we kind of got off track there, but generally speaking, if you feel like you've lost your, like if you've wasted all your points in, in life and you've like missed key milestones, the good news is that you can learn basically at any time. Like the idea of a age or I'm too old for this, unless you're like, you know, a woman who wants to like bear children or something like there's some biological, you know, like uh, you know, barriers, which are very hard to overcome. If you're a 75 year old woman or a man, I suppose, and you decide that you want to have children, like bear a child, like there may be biological constraints, but outside of that, you know, if you're 25, 30, 35, and you want to go back to college, you want to start becoming a game developer, like, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, deliberate practice and focusing your mind on something will allow you to work on it. You can just always farm up skill points. You just have to start farming. When it comes to turning your life around, I would say eight weeks is the amount of time it takes to start. You should be rolling by 12 weeks. By 40 weeks, some people will have turned their life around and give yourself two years of deliberate work. And basically people will ask me, they'll come in with like trauma and abuse and like being on drugs and all this stuff. And they're like, my life is nowhere. I'm 26 years old. You know, how do I fix all these problems? And I'll be like, give me two years. If in the worst case scenario, it's taken me about two years. I'm thinking about some patients of mine that have really had like trauma and addictions and like are unemployed and in their like mid to late twenties, even early thirties. And, you know, in a two year time span, they are, you know, in school for something that they really care about. And so I had one patient, for example, who became like a plumber and so would work a lot and then like was making like 80 or a hundred bucks an hour. And then was also like doing game development on the side. So they're like, their passion is game development. They figured out, okay, I'm going to become a plumber. I'm going to work nights because I'm a night owl anyway. And then the upside of working nights is that 24 hour plumbing services, you get to charge more, right? Because it's like, you're showing up at someone's house at three in the morning. So he'll go to someone's house at three in the morning, work for two hours and make like $500. And then if he doesn't get any calls, he's just working on his game design. It's like, it's a great life that he's crafted, but it takes about two years to get there. So does that make sense?
So at the end of the day, life is an RPG, like that's totally fine. If you've wasted all your stat points in the wrong skills, like that's okay too. You can just farm up more stat points. All it takes deliberate practice and patience.